That's how his story gonna go. We just let her tell it from her point of view. Tag and title. The BMW came out to just <laughs> under 90,000. Nah, he um, got all his wrote down so in the notes. He, he know exactly what to say. remember this conversation. That boy know exactly so what to say. So fucking vividly. So, he, he's on the phone. She the one stuttering. She, he, he right. was. Part eight of who the fuck did I. All right. She the one stuttering. the finance department for his job. Obviously, I have no idea what this person's name is, but he called the person. He explained to them. This is the amount of money He said the president of the company so-and-so has authorized for him to get a car not spending more than I think 90,000 tax tag and title the BMW came out to bro, just under 90 that nigga cat bro. I your job gonna tell you how much you can't spend on a car, bro This nigga cap how your job gonna tell you you can't go over this amount of living on the car? Bro, what? Nigga, cat, bro. Um, and so he, I remember this conversation. That's cat, bro. So fucking vividly. So he's, he's on the phone in front. I'm standing, I'm sitting down. The salesperson sitting down at their desk. Right. And he's like, they, you know, they put me on hold. And so he's like, he, I guess the person comes back and he says, um, yeah, the, the price of the car is blah, blah, blah. He was like, give me a second and I can send you a picture of that printout that shows tax tag and title for the BMW. He gets off the phone. He takes a picture of it. He sends it to whoever. Cap. <coughs> it's too much texting and pictures and sending and calling, bro. It's too much pictures and calling. Like, let's get to it, man. Let's get to it, bro. Let's get to it, chat, bro. Let's get to it, bro. I'm happy I watched this story, bro, because now I know what to do. I ain't gonna lie, chat, bro. I get a girlfriend, bro. I ain't no too, ain't no too much of texting, calling, no nothing. I'm so happy he I waited to about this. ten minutes. He calls the person back. He says, "Did you get it?" Apparently, the person did get it, but the person who can who can it's too much texting and calling do going the on. The wire transfer had gone home for the day. So what you know she said, was, chat y'all know she was fucked up chat. She using all these big words and shit. She using all these scamming words, transitioning from the banks. She using all this extra shit. You know, you know she was through chat. But she did good though with the diary when she was doing the voice voice di diary. She did good with that. I feel like that's how she know how to say her story without stuttering and messing up, bro. Cuz I know this been on her head for a minute like somebody she was married with, bro. For bro like the nigga already, uh, bro, the nigga already ain't no good, chat. The nigga already ain't no good, chat. He already ain't no good. He already ain't no good. And I'm going to tell you how he ain't already ain't no good. He ain't no good because they holding hands the, on the first date. As to um, the BMW salesperson, he's like, okay, we're going to have to do this tomorrow because so-and-so went home for the day. I don't know who the salesperson is. I can only tell you from my viewpoint what I thought. I had no reason to think this was a lie. I really oh, did Oh, my God. Because, again, you got to keep, oh, my keep God. in mind the circumstances that all of this is happening. We're inside the dealership. We're sitting at the desk of this person. <laughs> he gave us the printer. My fault. I couldn't hold my laughing. I was just thinking about how this nigga said I, could, I just couldn't think about how this nigga said that he played for arena football. Like, why would you lie? Like, bro, like, that's not even nothing to lie. All right, 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 game is game. I'm about to start telling women, like, hey, I played arena basketball for no reason. Like, you go, that's the, that was the whole point of her whole story in the beginning. She said he was a path of pathological logic liar so that mean like you lying for no reason like everything you're saying you're lying for no reason i can understand if it's a reason you say i'm gonna tell her i play <laughs> i'll be like hey hey i played arena soccer baby listen to me let me tell you i knew something back in my days baby let me tell you bro that nigga's a real that nigga lied but bro what's the point of telling her that bro I think that was that what the I think y'all that that's what the whole story gonna dumb down to is everything he said he lied for no reason. Like I can understand if it was a reason to lie. Like I understand like if you lie like 
if a girl be like, you broke. And then you be like, and I played arena football. Now, that's a reason to lie. Like, they call you broke. But she never said nothing about no football, no nothing. But this nigga put it in there. So now I'm starting to think that the whole story chat is going to be this nigga putting stuff in there. The nigga going to be just putting stuff in there, chat. I think that's going to be the whole, with the whole story going to dumb down to chat. The nigga was just putting stuff in there. The nigga, the, he didn't even, he really like, he didn't really like the word hats. It wasn't nothing wrong with his head. Then she gonna come out the blue like, I never seen his head. But he told her that he wear caps because he ain't like his head. Whole time, the nigga like his head. Like, I, <laughs> the nigga lie for no reason. All right, I'm about to start lying. Just saying like, oh, I wear a size 10 in shoes. Nigga, I wear an 8. Baby, I wear a 10, baby. I wear a 10, baby. <laughs> she buy you some shoes you can't even fit them. <laughs> nigga putting this shoe on like he can fit that one. <laughs> nigga put this feet. No nigga got his feet in a size 10 on because he lied about his shoe size. <laughs> All the time you work with no hat. <laughs> Dog, man, you need to be commentating over this shit, dog. Oh, bro, man, you got to get a Discord, dog. Oh, my God, bro. We got to get this nigga Benz a Discord, bro. This nigga got me crying, bro. Oh, my God, bro. Benz, you need to be commentating over this shit and posting clips, bro. That shit would have went viral, bro. Oh, my God. That would have went viral, bro. Only because I know how Bans would have said that shit in his old voice. Like, whole time he going to work with no hat. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. That shit was too funny. I need a minute. Whew, that shit was too fucking funny, bro. It's only funny because I got a hat on, bro. So I can imagine the nigga squeezing the hat on to tell his wife, like, yeah, baby, I'm, at the, I'm, a, I'm on my way to work. Nigga get to work, nigga taking the hat off like whole time. Nigga ain't even going to work with no hat on. He's on the phone, do, you know, doing business, basically saying, "Look, I need this is how much money the car is going to cost." He's taking a picture of it. He seemingly is texting someone saying, "This is how much, you know, this is proof of how much it is." Then he asked the BMW salesperson, "I need your wire transfer information." The guy got up, rushed over to, I guess, their finance area to get the wire, the bank wire information, because obviously you have to wire it a certain kind of way. Rushes back over, gives it to my ex-husband. My ex-husband's like, "Okay, first thing in the morning, we will get this wired over, and then, you know, I'll come and pick up the car." My fiance, me, will drive me up here to pick up the car. So oh, we God. leave. He felt like because at the time that this all happened, I was pregnant. So he felt like, look, we're about to have a baby. I don't want you driving that Nissan Rogue. I want to get you something. Up. I want to get you something more secure, something new. I really wanted a Kia. <laughs> I really wanted a Kia tell you ride. Um, and he was like, like well, let's let's look at the warranty. This man knew a lot about cars. He knew a lot about the did. warranty. He knew a lot about the depreciation value. And so he did talk to me a lot about what will we get the most for our money. Um, we test drove when I say we, I. I test drove a Kia Telluride, a Kia Sorento. He didn't like either of those. He had me test drive a Ford Explorer. He didn't really care for that. Then came time where he really wanted me to get a BMW. Um, he really wanted me to get a BMW X5. So 
he took me to B global BMW Imports, which if you know anything about Atlanta, it's off of Cobb Parkway, but you can see it off of uh, off the highway. I believe 285 is where you can see the global Imports BMW dealership. He took me there. He had me test drive an X5 and X6. Um, he also had me test drive a uh, I think I'm gonna get the numbers wrong a 525 which was a sedan I did not like that I wanted an SUV um, I loved driving the BMW he also had me drive an M series test drive an M series so he was very adamant that I should get a BMW the reason being is because according to him he had a BMW in California when he lived in San Diego he had a BMW that he loved it was a white BMW he showed me pictures of the BMW so he showed me pictures of this white BMW that he had and unfortunately the car got totaled about two months before he moved to Georgia so he had received um, money not a lot but of some money to get another car and he used it to get the Ford Taurus because he was like I just need a car that's going to get me from A to B until I get into a house and I'm much more settled for him he was like I'm really giving myself 60 days to get settled here in Georgia after moving from California but then he met me again right. that's the story so he had me test drive the BMW so much so i loved the bmw the bmw loved it i wanted a dark blue bmw with cognac interior i wanted an x5 and i wanted an m series so i can clearly tell y'all that's exactly the car i wanted we were online looking for that particular car because not every dealership had it i was okay with a black bmw if needed um, but I really wanted dark blue and I really wanted that cognac colored interior. So he felt like I want you to still, I want you to consider all of a sudden an Audi Q8. Let's just see how you like it. Why he switching cars for nigga? The nigga just, just said, let's get the beer. <laughs> That nigga, Mr. Krabs, that nigga, bro. <laughs> in a minute, in a minute, he, she finna be driving a hoopty. That's probably what she driving in on. The nigga went from a BMW to an Audi. Next, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna go down the line. You know what I'm saying? If you don't really like it, I, I, but she wanted to kill though. Like I don't understand this guy, chat Bass. I don't understand this guy. She asked for a Kia. Key arts are not that much, bro. The nigga said, listen, let me break y'all logic down to this guy right here. Let me break you down to this, this guy, uh, Tequila. She wanted a Kia. And if he got all this money, a Kia would be like a dollar to him, bro. If he got all this money to just put $700,000 on the house, a Kia is like a dollar to him. But he said, no, nah, I need you to be stepping. Get a BMW. She looking for it. She was okay with the Kia. She wanted a Kia. This nigga convinced her into wanting a BMW. She finally finds a BMW. She want that bad. This is the car. This nigga say. This nigga say. Let's go down. Go down. To an Audi. Let's get an Audi. Let's get an Audi. Let's get an Audi. Let's go down. <laughs> Ladies and <girl. laughs> I'll tell you, bro. Back to the BMW. I cannot tell you why he switched up. I can. I can. I can. I can. The nigga's a manipulator, bro. I can't. Um, but I can tell you he took me to an Audi dealership. <laughs> They going to dealership. <laughs> that nigga having fun, bro. That nigga going to dealership to dealership. And that. <laughs> that nigga is looking at his life as a roller coaster ride, bro. That nigga looking at his life as a roller coaster ride, bro. 
bro having fun. They going to dealership to dealership. That nigga, <laughs> yeah, that bitch spurging. <laughs> that nigga, <laughs> best. That nigga selling dreams, best. That nigga selling dreams, bro. <laughs> I might do that one day. I might do that one day. That's bold, though, but I might do that one day. But I might sell a bit of dream one day, bro. I ain't never did that in my life, bro. That shit look fun, bro. Just tell a bit like, man, let's go to the BMW shop. Geek her head up. BMW? Oh, yeah. I'm going to get you a BMW, babe. I'm going to get you a BMW, babe. BMW? She test driving. I want it. I want it. Matter of fact, let's go to Audi, babe. Let's hit the Audi shop. Let's hit the Audi shop. Can we get an Audi? I kind of liked it that one. Oh, let's get the Audi. I'm about to spurge. I'm about to spurge. We go to the Audi shop. She driving the Audi. Oh, it feels so good. The roof come down. Let me get you a Hellcat, man. Let's pull up the Dodge, man. Let's pull up the Dodge. <laughs> Oh, Tom, nigga ain't got no car. <laughs> oh, Tom, oh, Tom, he ain't got no car. Oh, Tom, oh, Tom, nigga ain't got no wheels. Nigga selling dreams, bro. Nigga, nigga, cause this nigga pulling out seven thousand dollars, bro. Well, he don't got, he ain't pulling out seven thousand dollars, but he said he was gonna put seven thousand dollars on the house. They never got no house, but he's driving a Ford, bro. Okay, bro. On Peachtree Industrial, he test drove an Audi, and I test drove an Audi Q8. I bet y'all, um, nigga, just test drive it. <laughs> Nigga just test driving. <laughs> she she ain't had been like he test drove that. I test drove this. He test drove that. I test drove. That. You ain't get the point. Y'all just test driving cars. <laughs> <laughs> play GTA in the crew. I'm telling y'all that boy playing D for speed. What? That boy playing D um, for speed. I loved the Q8. <coughs> I loved, it, you loved did. it. Loved it. Loved it. But you I was did. tired of test driving cars. By this, I bet you what? <laughs> <laughs> I got this. <laughs> Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, shit. Man, I got tears in my eyes. I bet you was, baby. I bet you was tired of test driving cars. I bet you was ready to get down to the real deal. Now, let's see what he said. I had test dri test driven so many cars. So many, so many cars. You ain't even know how to drive. You done drove them. She done pulled off in a Lamborghini. Um, our weekends were spent either looking at a house or test driving cars. Go home. And I was picky, I will admit that. Right. So he right. had me test drive the Q8. Right. I really liked it. I finally right. just told him, look, I'm good with either the BMW or the Audi. I'll take either one. Either one, babe. Either one. Guess what he said? Cause I'm tired of I'm tired of test driving cars. Right. He told my family he was buying me a new car because, it, keep in mind, he had, mm -hmm. well, not keep in mind, let me let y'all know. He had met my family mm -hmm. initially on Zoom. Right. Because, again, we were. Right. 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 The nigga met the family on a Zoom call. Hey, ma. Not even FaceTime chat. Zoom. This nigga, <laughs> this nigga made a Zoom meeting and invited everybody in the Zoom. Hey, Ma. This is him right here. This is him. Hey, Ma. What up, sir? What up, sir? Hey, fam. 
That nigga met the whole family on a Zoom. Crazy that woman. We were locked out. He had met my family. Um, right. He also had met my family in person because at this point, it was like, look, if you're not showing any symptoms, maybe we can do family dinner. Right. Um, and so we had. So he had met my family in person. Right. And now we will go ahead and move towards part 10 of this series. Oh, God. Okay. Part 10. Who the fuck did I marry? Okay. I had to sneeze. All right. So at this point, I had test driven all these cars. Kia's. Um, Hell catch so track car. Test drive a uh, Nissan Murano. Uh, but the main two were BMW and then the then track car. Right. He had told my grandfather he was getting me a car. Right. Told, he had grandpa, told my aunt he was getting auntie, me a car. That auntie, he was baby. going to. He he was like, she's going to be my wife. I want her to be in something secure. In the track car. Right. So. My family was really like, wow. Oh, you're going to be driving a tra track hawk? Oh, you right. know. Right. Uh, wow. Wow. You know, who knew that Can't he wait. had this kind of money? Right. Who uh, knew? Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? She could have called me when all this was happening. I would have been told her, like, yo, I've been test driving a lot, don't you think? Um, and so I hated the fact that he did that because anytime he got around my family, Here's another red flag to put in in the What's United the red flag? Nations of red flags. Right. He would always talk about money. Oh yeah. And he would always brag. I never realized it in real time. I didn't realize it until I was out of the situation. That boy he get around the family about the fact that he could fight, the fact that he had money, and the fact that he played football. Wait, Those what? The fact that he, about he wanted them the type of niggas. He, fight. he always bragged about the fact that he could fight. <laughs> That nigga get around a family and get the that nigga, bro, chat. That nigga get around a family and he one of them. He one of them, chat. Chat. He's one of them type of niggas. Chat. He's one of them. Tequila. He one of them. He get around a family. He get to talk about fighting. He get to talk about Brad what else? About the fact that he could fight, fight the fact that he had money, and the fact that he played football. Money and football. Those are the three things. All cap. All cap. All cap. Now he's a UFC fighter. Now he went to Arena UFC. <laughs> things he okay. always bragged about. Okay. Back to the cars. So, I okay. told him, I was like, pick one between the BMW and the Audi. Because you said you're buying it. So, pick one. So, this man chose the Audi. So he takes me to the dealership. Right. I wanted a white Q8. Right. He does the, give me the printout of how much it's going to cost tax, tag, and title right. to get this Q8. Right. Gentleman who's helping us gives him the, the printout. Right. He's saying he's going to pay this money for the car out of the savings account that's, that's offshore. Oh, God. This nigga stay love talk about a saving account, bro. That's the story. That's what he said. From overseas. So he apparently is asking the guy, you know, is there a holding fee? Can I pay a holding fee to secure this car? Bro, while it's too I'm much going on. But I would have been the money transferred because obviously with COVID. Look at the comments, chat. They talking at this point. I'm thinking he did. They talking at this point. I'm thinking he started the lockdown. <laughs> Bro, it's going to take bro. long for the banks to transfer the money. Side note. That nigga I couldn't need wait for the lockdown. Well, that nigga had this in plan. One of the reasons why he was able to get away with the stuff he got away with is because we were on lockdown. It's crazy. I was. I just said that. Did I not chat? Chat, he couldn't wait for lockdown, bro. That nigga ready for a part two. That nigga like, man, I'm about to run it up again. He blamed the lockdown for everything, boy. This is now 2024. The pandemic. The I whole time, Bans, bro was, bro was, he was living the pandemic life. Really? It ain't no, no savings account from overseas, bro. We had the pandemic. Bro was living in a pandemic, bro. I don't know. Do we all remember how it seemed like a lot of stuff stopped in 2020 now? Keep in mind, that's not an excuse I'm making because shit still got done. But I feel bad for her. I ain't gonna lie. The lockdown, the worst time to try to talk to somebody, child. I ain't gonna lie. 
When it was locked down, bro, that was the worst time, bro. That was the worst time, bro. In terms of business as usual, business as usual just was not happening in 2020 at this time. Right. So when he's saying, oh, it's going to take a while for the bank to transfer the money, the gentleman who was working at Audi did not even, he didn't make a face. He didn't, he, he didn't blink. He was like, I know it's going to take a while because of COVID. Right. So basically. Oh, I see what he did, chat. Every time he was saying something's going to take a while, it was because COVID. So every time he was buying something, it's going to take a while. And it's COVID. Like, they like, yeah, it's going to take a while. Like, it's COVID. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that might be a fact. I mean. What's up happening is we leave. He has the printout. Then when COVID was going, bro, people didn't even really. I ain't going I, I to lie, bro. When COVID was going, bro, people didn't even want to. I ain't going to lie, bro. People didn't even want to work when COVID was in, bro. I ain't going to lie to you, bro. Nigga, I was in Kroger's, nigga. Them, that store, nigga, I was working at Kroger's when COVID was going. Nigga, that store looked at retarded, bro. I'm talking, nigga, it was no meat coming in, no meat in the back, no meat on the shelves, no tissue, no nothing, nothing coming in. Boy, that bitch looked crazy, bro. So I'm already knowing, for real facts, bro, I'm already knowing that he probably just was using everything as an excuse to everything, like like, like the, Z, the Zillow stuff, them buying the house. Talking to the people, like, they probably, like, bro, it's COVID. Like, people was like, I don't know, bro. It was he weird. calls the bank, or he calls his his um, financial advisor. Bro, he calling he a lot of people. Name. The financial advisor's name is Eric. I feel comfortable using certain people's names, especially if we find out they didn't exist. Um, so he calls Eric. He tells Eric in front of me, in front of me, hey, I need to transfer... $72,526, whatever the amount was, because I'm buying a car for my fiance. This is the bank account information. Do you need me to give it to you over the phone or do you need me to email it to you? Pause. I can't hear what the person's saying, but that's what he would do. Do you need me to give it to you over the phone or can I email it to you? Okay. Okay. This nigga was talking to nobody. This nigga was talking to nobody, chat. She really played dummy, bro. I would have said put the phone on speaker. She was really playing dummy, bro. The nigga literally got on the phone with a fake. The nigga got on the phone with nobody. He just holding the phone to his ear like, do you need me to transfer over the $2 billion to my account or you want me to email it to you? All right. All right. Say less. It's a, all right. Uh, yeah, that was, that was my supervisor. He was telling me to send her the two bands, the, the, the two, two billion dollars over to him. And then we was going to get the car. We was going to figure out what was going on with the car. Uh, They said after the two billion get here, uh, it's COVID. Uh. It's going to take about a, uh, like, six months. So, from now to, winter. From summer to winter, you should have your car with the winter, my baby. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. <laughs> right, <get laughs> that ain't an email it to you. All right, let me know. I'll call you back to let to find out if you received it. Bro, that nigga is sick in the head, bro. Ain't no way that nigga got on a fake call, bro. It's not never that serious, bro. Hang up. Right. So I'm hearing this because again, I'm not paying attention to. Did I hear anybody on the other phone? Did I hear anybody on the other end? So. He um he proceeds to type up an email, type right. up something, telling him this is the information that we need. Um, I didn't think anything of it. He called me at work the next day to tell me that the money was sent right. to Audi. That he called Audi and he confirmed with Audi that they received the money. What he told me is that the car 
is going to be um, delivered to the house. Y'all, We. it's not that I lived in a hood, because I didn't. But I did not live in an area of Clayton County where you would have a brand new Audi delivered to your house. So I remember saying to him, I don't want that car, like, delivered to the house. Not yet, because... You was a victim. You a victim. But, 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 look, wait, chat, before she did say she had her wrongs in here, too. This might have been one of her wrongs. I need the to car delivered is crazy. That is crazy. And my Nissan was, I only had a one-car garage, so my Nissan was in the garage. So, he said, okay, well, let me call them back and change the delivery date. Can you be home or can you t do a half day? So he's asking me, can you work a half day so that they can deliver the car and you and you will be home for it? I said, yes, that's fine. Because again, I can't wait it's to see COVID, I'm working from home anyway. Um, I only had to go in the office two days a week. So I, I'm at home the next day. He told me the car would be delivered between the hours of one and three. Hmm. Oh, God. Obviously, between 1 and 3, nothing happened. So, 3 o'clock, I called him. He's at work. He sends me the voicemail. Oh, God. He calls me back. I said, it's 3 o'clock. I didn't know one ever came with the car. Um, What's going on? I bet. I, I'm much on the bet. I know what he's going to say. I got to call my, my, my super advisor. Uh, the two bill, the two meal for the car, whatever how much you pay for the car, it 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 it, it transpired. That boy will get to speaking words he ain't never said. Like it transpired, the transition went back, and the motor had went out the car. And right when they was about to send it to you, they had to pick the car right back up. The police called me, and when the police called me, that's when I knew that the neighbors was gonna knock at the side door, and I thought. That when I had went to work in the morning, I forgot to brush my teeth. And then that's when my auntie just called me. Though my auntie called me, she told me that I was going to order a pizza for it. And when I ordered a pizza for her, watch, he got to make a whole story. Watch it. And then I remember I was like, well, do I need to call Audi myself? Because I thought that you handled it. But if you didn't handle it, let me, do I need to call them? And so whenever I would suggest I will handle it, he would get very, very defensive. Red flag number 472. Right. So he was like, no, I will call Audi. Don't do anything. I'll call Audi and find out what's going on. Okay. So I'm at home chilling, cooking dinner, normal night. He calls me back and says, yeah, the car was stuck on the truck in Spartan. because apparently that's where their deliveries come from so when he told me this i was in the kitchen laughing because by this point that boy been that boy been playing my career for them badges boy that nigga for sure got that hall of fame liar boy that boy got that Hall of Fame liar for sure. That boy been in my career grinding, boy. That boy been in my career grinding. He not even a scammer. He not even a scammer, chat. We can't even call him a scammer. This dude is a Hall of Fame liar, bro. Bro is a liar, bro. He's not scamming. Because he's not buying nothing or he's not getting nothing. He's sitting there lying. Literally. Literally. Bro been in my career grinding for them badges, bro. Bro got Hall of Fame liar and he got gold manipulator, bro. And he just got silver pump faker on top of that. I will be honest, and I told y'all I'll be honest. Even All right, when she about to say it. She about to say it like this is where she wrong. Because usually right then and there, she should have left. But this is where I say she she 
retarded. This is right here where I say, where I go against the grain, bro. Look bad. I was guilty of... Right, she about to say I, her on wrong. On one hand, I believed him. And on the other hand, I was like, let me see what lie he come up with. Right. Let me just see. Um, but keep in mind, my brain was really like not rationalizing, not comprehending how deep the lie was. I just thought that no one told him the car was going to be delivered and he made that up. I had no idea how deep the lie went. So he said, you know, the car's in Spartanburg. Um, it should be delivered this weekend. The weekend came, he had a whole other excuse. Um, I don't remember what the exact excuse was as to why the car was never delivered. I do remember we got into an argument and I was like, don't even worry about it. I'm gonna get a new car my damn self. I don't even need your help. Which is probably one of the worst things you can tell a narcissist because they love to be the hero, you know. They look, it's, it's all about them. But I was like, don't even worry about it. I'll get when I when I have the money to get a car myself, I'll do it. I don't want to hear anything else about a new car. I don't want to hear shit else about a car. Because at this point, I was spending way too much time trying to figure out are we getting a car? Are we getting a house? Like where what the fuck is going on? Always there was an excuse. So when I told him, I don't want to hear anything else about a car, and I am not going to a dealership to test drive another car, um, that ended that whole discussion right there. So this is, what I'm, this is where I'm going to interject what I believe was happening. I believe that my ex-husband is the type of person, he gets off, uh, you know, nut. He gets off on you being excited about something that he knows you will never get. Damn. So I believe that he enjoyed going to car dealerships. He enjoyed um, watching me test drive a car and get excited about it, knowing I was not going to get it. That it is, nigga ain't he, right, it, dog. That nigga a villain, bro. That nigga a villain, bro. That nigga get excited. I never heard, bro. This is my first time ever hearing that, bro. I haven't heard a lot of stuff. When it comes to people and their relationships, bro. I have heard a lot. Like, not even just this. Like, movies. Like, stories. Like, I have heard a lot about people and the type of people that they dealt with. This is my first time. This is not I'm not even laughing at this one, chat. Because that's something that that is serious, bro. Like, that's something, like that's like me finding out something new. Like, I feel like I learned something new, bro. This dude really got, like she said, off. Like, it made him feel good inside that he he was basically telling her lies about things that she was never going to get. And that made him feel good. So, when she came with, like, he told her, like, oh, I'm going to buy you a house. And it made her get so excited. And it made him feel so good inside about how excited she got about her getting the house, even though he never was going to get it. So, from the beginning, he been doing that, like, telling her, like, oh, I play football. He probably said, like, oh, he played football before because it made her feel excited, like, like it made her feel good, like, you know what I'm saying? Him coming to fix her tire, like, he did all this because he a narcissist, bro. Like, everything, like, that he did, it was for him to feel like a good person. That's insane, chat. That's insane, bro. That is insane. It bro. is the level of cruelty. And again, I'm telling y'all stuff, insane, stuff that I found bro. out way later on. It is the level of cruelty that I still cannot comprehend. So the whole issue about the BMW and the Audi, I think he just enjoyed seeing me get excited and then pull it away. Part 11 coming up. Okay. All right, part 11. So for this part, I'm just going to give you some backstory on the family. Pause all the stuff about the house. Pause the stuff about the car. This is backstory on his family. See, Chad, I feel like it's going to be more because look what they're saying. Girl, at this point, I'm glad you made it still here. That man is sinister.
Not him talking to himself for 45 minutes. Oh my God, chat. Oh my God, chat. What if his, everything about his family was cap? Family, my ex husband. What if the whole time when he was talking to his mama, he wasn't talking to nobody, chat? Family. All right, follow me. My ex husband's parents, mom and dad, are both. <laughs> that nigga ain't so good, dog. Mom that nigga passed ain't away no from good, cancer. Bro. Um, dad passed away shortly after her. I'm not sure what he passed away from. So he has a number of siblings. He has two. With his parents, he has um, two siblings, two brothers, excuse me, two brothers. One is older, lives in Philly. One is younger by two years, lives in Nashville. He has two sisters. She low-key could have played it crazy with this story time. Like how many views and bro, she got millions of views and millions of likes from this story time, Chuck. She low-key could have stopped it right here and be like, I'm going to post everything on YouTube or another platform or I'm going to go live on Twitch and talk about it. Bro, she could have got off, bro. And people don't be paying attention to little things like that. Like, she could have got off, bro. Like, by time, if, if I was her friend, like, if I knew her and I was, like, watching this story, I would have told her, like, right here, stop at part 11. Everybody is invested in this story time. We really want to know what's going on. You should go with another platform. Do Twitch, YouTube, Kick, something. She could have blew, bro. She could have blew up, bro. All right, part 11. So for this part, I'm just going to give you some backstory on the family. Pause all the stuff about the house. Pause the stuff about the car. This is backstory on his family, my ex-husband's family. All right, follow me. My ex-husband's parents, mom and dad, are both deceased. Mom passed away from- Wait, who? Deceased. My ex-husband's parents, mom and dad, are both deceased. Okay. Mom passed away from cancer. Um, dad passed away shortly after her. So I'm her husband- her husband, mom, and dad passed away. Not sure what he passed away from. Let me go give me so some more food. He has me a, a number of siblings. Y'all let yes. me know what's going on. I can hear it, but y'all let me know what's parents, going on. He has um, two siblings, two brothers, excuse me, two brothers. One is older, lives in Philly. One is younger by two years, lives in Nashville. He has two sisters. One, Shantae, is older, lives in Douglasville with her husband and two kids, a boy and a girl. Younger sister, Kim, is the baby, lives in Augusta with her husband, worked at, I think he told me, Procter & Gamble. That was the story. He had two half-brothers that were through his dad. One brother lived in Baltimore. The other brother lived in Augusta. The brother that lived in Augusta, I have physically met in person, shook hands, hugged, all that. The brother that lived in Baltimore, I have FaceTimed with, talked to him. The brother that lived in Philly, the older brother that he looked up to, I have never talked to him on the phone. I would always talk to him um, through my, through my ex-husband. So the conversation would be like, hey, babe, uh, brother brother so-and-so said, hey, he didn't call him brother so-and-so. We'll call him John. John said, hey. Hey, John. I would be in the bathroom doing my hair, brushing my teeth. Hey, John. And he'd be like, did you hear? He said, how you doing? I was like, I'm good. How's he doing? Because um, that's just me. And so he would relay back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, he talked to John every day from starting around July after the grandmother passed away. He would talk to John every morning. We both would be getting ready for work and he would be on the phone with John. They would be talking for 30, 40 minutes, talking about football, talking about other siblings. They would be talking about cars they talk i mean it was it was really like not a big deal they would talk about the brother in baltimore they would talk about the brother in augusta and then they would they would reminisce this is the conversations i could hear let me explain when i say i can hear a conversation what that means is 
I am physically standing near him or next to him where I could hear him with the phone up to his ear talking to someone because it wasn't me. Okay. I may not hear the other person because the phone call may not be on speakerphone. But what I hear is, um, for example, I hear, hey man, what y'all doing? Oh, for real? Y'all barbecuing this weekend? What y'all making? Oh, that's what's up. Nah, I think me and her are going to stay in this weekend because, you know, these numbers is looking crazy with COVID. Yeah, she over here. She's just sitting right here. She watched the TV. Okay, hold on. John said, hey. Hey, John. You heard her? Okay. All right, Chat, I'm in the I kitchen. I just wanted to check in on you. And I just That's the say type of conversation careful. I'm explaining. Okay, so I hope that that gives a little more clarity about the type of conversations I'm hearing. So, um, I don't know why this light keeps going out. Um, okay, so that's the that's how he would talk to his siblings the grandmother passed away he called me around april or may <clears throat> and told me that his grandmother passed away his grandmother um on his dad's side had died suddenly from covid she has symptoms she went to bed and did not wake up he was distraught he was crying he wasn't eating he was just sitting there um listening to music not watching tv just sad because he was like you know my grandmother was always my my support system so from what i saw it really bothered him uh -uh. i did not think anything of it girl. i'm one of those people if you We're tell me somebody in your, in your family passed away huh? i don't believe you because i don't play about this death. that's peaceful. and i guess i expect other people don't either um however However, that is not the same for everyone else, but we'll get there. So family, he talked to his, he had his uh, sister, Shantae, who lived in Douglasville. Um, like I said, she was married with two kids. Apparently she Chat. was a nurse. So when I had my miscarriage, that was a sister that he was like, my sister will take you to the hospital. Like that's what- Chat, bro, bro is a top tier manipulator, bro. Bro is a top tier manipulator, bro. There's no way this dude faked phone calls with his family, bro. Bro. Ain't no way. Hey. Did y'all hear the conversation that she said that she had with him, bro? This dude is faking calls, bro. Right next to her, like he's like acting like he's on the phone, but he's not on the phone. Nobody family does. Okay, um, I had never met Shantae. So he probably faked crying about his grandma passing away. Chad, he probably fake cried, bro. I've been on the phone, or excuse me, I've been around him when he was on the phone with Shantae. Never heard her part of the conversation, um, but he would be talking to his sister. That's what he said. That's what it sounded like, too. Um, bro, now, what is... I ain't gonna lie, Chad. Humans is weird, bro. Bro, humans is weird, bro. That's why I don't rock with humans like that, bro. Humans is weird, bro. Ain't no way this dude talking to himself on the phone. His whole life is a facade, bro. Like, hopefully, I don't even know if I said that right, but his whole life is a lie, bro. Bro just sat right in front of this woman and lied about literally everything. Like, he, he said he was going to get her a car. And it makes him happy that she get happy about a lie. He never got her the car. He never got her the houses. Every time he on the phone with his so-called siblings, he's on the phone with nobody 
talking to himself for 45 minutes straight just to put on a act that he's on a phone with somebody, bro. Like, it's never that serious. Like, and I'll be thinking, like, what is, like, the logic behind Pathic, path, path, I don't even know how to say that. Pathic, Pathic Logical Liar. Yeah, bro, that is crazy, Interesting bro. is that we live it's never that maybe serious, bro. 35. And my thing is, like, it's why humans is so weird to me, because, like, what's the point, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, what you getting out of that? Like, even if you was to come and be honest, she probably would have still liked you for you, bro. Literally. He could have still just came and said, babe, I ain't even got. Like, it's not, it's the thing, like, bro, you trying to buy hundreds, hundreds of thousand dollar houses, bro, but you're lying about it. Like, it's, like, I can't even say it would have been okay if you just said, I don't got the money to buy a, 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 a quarter million or almost a quarter million, two quarter million house. There's nothing wrong with that, gang. Like, bro, you're obviously not rich. He putting on a facade that he's rich. Like, and that's what I don't be getting about humans. Like, what's the point of being a practical, logical liar, bro? Like, lying for no reason. I can understand if somebody said you're broke and then you'd be like, I do got money. That's not pathological. I mean, because you're lying for a reason. Somebody calling you something and you giving them something back. But if you, if nobody, that's like me getting on the camera and nobody said nothing about me. But I'm like, I got a million dollars. You just put out a bald face lie for no reason, bro. You literally just put out a bald face lie for no reason. Like, what's the point? Like, that's, that's the whole thing about it. Like, what, what was the point? And that's what I be wanting to get when I watch this, bro, is what's the point of lying, like, about everything that he lying? Like, what's the point of sitting there lying about, like, like, your grandma passed away and you faking crying about it? Whole time. Or it's so weird because when a person, a pathological liar, pathological liar, it's hard for me to say, chat, but when a person, a liar like that, bro, it's hard to even like, like say what's the point of the lie because you can't even believe the lie is a lie because the lie might be the lie that he's telling and it, the lie might be a lie. The whole time, right, he literally said his, his grandma passed away from COVID. So we know that he using COVID as the situation for everything. Because every time he say, I'm going to buy you a house. Oh, COVID stopping everything. This was going on. Woo, woo, woo. Like. So the whole time, she couldn't even, she probably didn't even pass. This, this, the, this is why the lie could be a lie. The lie that he told her was, she, his grandma passed away from COVID, right? You could put two lies behind that lie. One, his grandma probably never passed away from COVID. He's probably just telling her that. And two, she really could have died. She not I gonna say died, but she really could have passed away from something else that wasn't COVID. But he made it seem like COVID did it. Like, bro, like, and he's crying in front of her, crying about this, bro. Like, nah, that's forty insane, minutes away bro. from Douglasville. Humans is weird, bro. So that's there why were I don't rock with humans, bro. Like, that humans he weird, had invited bro. me to go with him to his sister. <laughs> and when he telling the truth, he lied. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. Okay, this is like, this, this is crazy, workout. bro. Total times he invited me was probably three times right. to his sister's house. With him to his sister's house. Right. Okay. Let me tell you how this would always work out. Total times he invited me was probably three times for different barbecues or whatnot. The first time he invited me, I was like, nah, I ain't going because again, COVID. Right. And she's a nurse. Hell no. Um, the second time. Whole time, it wasn't no barbecue. Whole time, his sister ain't a nurse. Whole time, he ain't got a sister. Whole time. And he was like, yeah, she invited us, but I don't think we should go because COVID. No. The third time, we ag I agreed to go. I was like, absolutely, I'll go meet your sister. Like, that'd be great. Um, on our way to her house oh god to douglasville to go see the sister um apparently he got a phone call the phone was always like on vibrate right but he got a phone call and 
he told me that something came up. Whole time he the only child. <laughs> hey, bro. And so she's she had to cancel the barbecue to get together, whatever. What? Um and so I was just like, Oh man, you know, okay. Well hopefully we can go another time. Goofy. It was it didn't happen close enough for me to have red flags, if that makes sense. Um, but at this point, as y'all probably are like, girl, you so blind. Right. But again, I didn't think anything of it because it's like, okay, it, it fell through. We'll see. We'll reschedule. Everything just falling through for you, huh? Um, and so we just went out to eat, and then he talked to another brother, the brother from Augusta that he would have on speakerphone. So it was. Next, what? He got a brother in Afghanistan, huh? He got an older brother in Afghanistan. Like, you know, I didn't I didn't think anything of it. I, I didn't think anything of it. <laughs> I didn't think anything. Come on, man. Come on, man. I really didn't. Um, man. And the more I talk about it, the more I realize, like, I'm, I'm not a dumb person. But it just never dawned on me the things that you have to now investigate. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it didn't dawn on me. But nevertheless, that is the backstory for I'm his family, him, right? Grandmother passed away. I'm scared Three of weeks him, later, he called me and told me his uncle had passed away from COVID. The uncle had tested positive, had to go into the hospital, and he died. Yeah. It was um, a bit of a red flag. It was a bit of a red flag. Ah! Oh, somebody called me. Round back, child. Wish I had some milk, child. These, but like I said, I don't play about cookies that. Right here. Bust, so, they like the cookies that go in the banana. I was bread. just like, wow. Because of these two deaths, he became a stickler about COVID. And when I mean a stickler, wear your mask, wear gloves, hand sanitize, wash your hands. Like he was annoying about making sure neither one of us caught COVID. So now I'm going to give you the backstory. In regards to what I was told with the ex-wife. Right. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. I know I look rough, but it's okay. It's okay. Anyway, so this is part 12 of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? So this is the backstory on what I was told for the ex-wife. This is important. Pay attention. <laughs> All right. This is 2020. So this is what I was told in 2020. I was told that he and his ex-wife mm -hmm. used to be friends. Then right. they started dating and subsequently got married. They got married in California. Um, he had bought a house with the money that he made from arena football. I ain't gonna lie, chat. I felt that coming, boy. That arena football money stretched him. Boy. Boy, boy, boy. That arena football money stretch, yeah. He had apparently had gotten married on the downward of the arena football career. Um, had a nice mm -hmm. house. He showed me a picture of the house, showed me pictures inside the house. Remember that? Real showed flag. me pictures inside the house. It was Why are you showing me pictures of the house? Show me the I, I don't even want to see the family. But if you're going to show me anything, show me the family that you had. Like, we're the family. Why are you showing the house? It was a really nice home in San Diego. And um, basically what happened was that he came home from work early one day. And 
the hiccups, sorry. Came home early from work one day and his wife was sleeping with another man. The man was in the house. Cap. He and the man get into it. Her son, who um, is about 17 years old in 2020, um, she had two kids, a daughter and a son. The son apparently was on his way home from school when my ex-husband found his previous wife in bed with another man. Right. So the story goes that he and the guy fought. He kicked the guy out. He kicked his ex-wife out, but told her the kids could stay. The kids are not biologically his. Those are his stepkids. Right. Um, she was like, you must be kidding. Like, I'm not leaving my kids here. The kids are old enough to where um, they were like, we're, we don't want to go because you fucked up. We don't want to leave. Right. So apparently she leaves. Um, the kids stay with him for a few weeks. And uh, then she gets her own place. The kids move out, move in with their mom. He um, he files for a divorce in California. Right. He files for a divorce in California, and it was an ugly divorce. She was asking for spousal support, all kinds of stuff. And then it turned into, um, you know, I'll help you with the kids, not child support, but just I'll, I will give you some money for the kids because apparently he was very close to the kids and he wanted to keep a relationship with the kids. Their biological fathers, apparently there were two fathers, their biological fathers were not in the picture. So um, the divorce starts out contested and ugly, eventually becomes amicable. Eventually they become cordial with each other. Right. So my ex-husband moved. This is all, all before he ever met me. So I'm telling you the story of what I was told in 2020. So eventually, about two years later is when his job approached him about an opportunity to transfer to Georgia. And so he took it. New beginning, fresh start. He has family in Georgia. He took it. He told me this. Hey, this got to get on Netflix, bro. This got to get on Netflix, bro. This got to get on Netflix, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, she come across this live. This got to get on some type of something. Cut me a check. I play a role. I play one of the real estate agents. I play. I'm not playing that nigga. I'm not playing him, though, because his job a little bit difficult, bro. He, I, I don't think I can fake cry about something how he did. You got to find somebody good enough for that role. His job sound a little bit too difficult for me. His job feels a little bit too difficult for me. I played a fake brother. Well, I ain't no brother. Ain't nobody. But whole time, ain't nobody on this side. But I play one of the dealers. I, I, I let them test drive the cars. Like, yeah, you can test drive this one. You can test drive that one. You can test drive this one. You know what I'm saying? Story pretty much the second or third conversation we had. Um, wow. so it was always from the beginning that she had cheated. He caught her and, um, wow. he had filed for divorce, but he was still close to the kids. Wow. They still had a great relationship. I've heard him. I've heard him on the phone with the kids, you know, just encouraging them, helping them, helping the 17 year old, like with homework. Um, mm -hmm. the kids really apparently wanted to meet me. And I was fine with that. Um, bro, he would, this, apparently he would send them. I might play his role, chat. Because I'm just thinking about how much money. That role going to be a lot of money, though, chat. I might fuck around and get rich off and shit like that. If I play it good enough. What y'all think, chat? Cause we already know if Tyler Perry listened to this this story, you know he finna run with it, bro. If she don't copyright this, bro. Cause did that happen with somebody before chat? Like when somebody told a story, and I think it was like somebody put it out there. No, people were talking about it with uh Jeffrey Dahmer. Like people talk about with Jeffrey Dahmer how the daddy didn't um he didn't get the rights to it, woo woo, 
and his story got put out, he ain't get no money for it, nothing like that. And he wanted money for it. So yeah, we already know Tyler Perry finna run with this story like crazy. It's about to be a lot of watch. You about to watch a movie like this real soon, the money. Bro. Right. You know, if they need. And y'all gonna be like, bro, this movie look real familiar. It's because it is. Watch this, cause, bro. Because it's too viral, bro. It's too viral, bro. It's too viral. Y'all know I don't sit on TikTok and watch TikTok for this long, bro. It's the longest I ever watched. Like, this the longest I ever stayed on TikTok, bro. Ever. I get on TikTok, I post my content, and I get off TikTok. I get If I do go on TikTok and scroll for a minute, I'm scrolling for at least a couple, two, three videos, four videos, and I'm off there. Or I'm looking at what people sent me. This is the longest I've ever been on TikTok. I think because he he loved the kids as if they were his own. I'm telling you the story as I was told it in 2020. So, let's see. Around April or May of 2020, he informs me that his ex-wife... Y'all know what's so crazy George? about life? I'm not saying she lying, Chuck. But she getting a bag off this for sure. If she already in her TikTok program, her TikTok creator program, and she had to think of an idea or like something that'll go crazy, and she just thought of an idea and she just took, going off the hip with all this, she might be the path to lock the bro. Real talk. I'm not saying her story is fake. I believe her. What I'm saying, like, that's just how crazy life gets sometimes. Like, she got a million people watching. Like she probably was speaking facts to the on the first video, then the second and third video. She like, I gotta keep going with this, bro. Like I'm pulling millions of views. Everybody keep watching, and she's getting that bag, bro. Then this story went up to fifty. Ain't no way. Apparently, she's staying with her sister in Gwinnett County. So she has moved to Georgia. The two kids are now in Georgia, and so when he tells me all this, I'm like. So what what's that supposed to mean? Now I will say this. He never made it seem as if she wants him back. He never presented that. It was always, no, nah, you know, we're we're cool for the kids. We're cool for the kids. Wow. Um but he he's never presented that she was trying to get him back. I feel like it's fair to her for me to say that. Um and again, stay with me. It all comes out. But right. um, that was the backstory in regards to the ex-wife. That they got married in California. They divorced in California. Right. And then she eventually moved to Georgia, to Gwinnett County, after he had transferred to Georgia for his job. Um, he did tell me that you know every now and then he'll get a text message from her. Um, he told me that he, you know, told her when I was pregnant, he felt like she needed to hear that from him instead of hearing it from the kids. Um, and we got into a bit of an argument about that, but right. that's an argument, honey, in the big scheme of things that <sighs> anyway, so we got into an argument about that. I felt like the fuck is, that's none of her. I'm still lost tequila that she even seen that she even be around this guy. Cause when we first seen it, bro, we literally was saying like, bro, she didn't even meet the guy. She fell in love and woo woo. She actually met this guy. And that's business. Um, but that's the the overall backstory of her. So remember, because <laughs> there will be a quiz. But just remember, he um, met her in California, married her in California. Divorced her in California. She moved to Georgia, to Gwinnett County after he moved to Georgia. Are we clear? Okay. Right. Right. Fine. Right. Okay. Part 13 of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? Um, so I've kind of given you guys all the backstory. Let's just kind of recap real quick. So I told you how we met. Met in March of 2020. Um, basically Georgia got shut down. I keep saying shut down, got locked down. We decided to quarantine together. I know it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, I really liked him <laughs> and thought he liked me. So, um, I told you guys how we met, um, things moved at a rapid, rapid pace. Met in March, 
moved in together pretty much beginning of end of March, beginning of April. Found out I was pregnant in May. Lost the baby in June. Had to have surgery in July. Started looking for houses. Um, Started looking at cars. All this stuff happened literally between March and the end of, excuse me, and August is when I got my car. So, um, got a car in August. He paid the down payment for that car, um, which I was shocked by. And no, it was not a BMW or an Audi. It was a Nissan Altima, but I loved that car at the time. So he paid the down payment for that car. Told me he would help me with the car payment. The biggest mistake that I made And I'll explain why I say this. The biggest mistake I made was that I signed myself up for a car, a car note, where I knew I needed his help to pay the car note. I knew better. My mom has always taught me, do not ever put yourself in a position where you are financially dependent on a man. Wow. And all of that went out the window. And the reason why I say that was the biggest mistake is because when I have pulled back the layers of this whole monstrosity of life (laughs) that I lived for 2020 and 2021, it really does boil down to the fact that I truly ended up marrying him more out of fear than anything else. And I'll expound upon that later, but... Um, I got the car in August and by this point I was, I was exhausted of looking at cars. I was mad that I didn't get a BMW X5 dark blue with cognac interior. Um, and I was tired of looking at houses, getting my hopes up, looking at a house and picturing myself in the master bedroom, the kitchen, the island, you know, Uh, all that stuff. I'm a visual person and... I was tired of giving my getting my hopes up. Um, right. So now we're going to segue into fall going into the holidays. <sighs> oh, God. Here's what happened. Oh, God. In October, we looked at another house. This house was in Marietta. Take, take, look at that house. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, it was gorgeous. I want to say that the house was about $700,000. I really liked the house. I could see myself living there. I could see myself cooking there. Um, and so subsequently my ex-husband put in an all cash offer on that house. I watched him put an all cash offer in on the house. Our real estate agent, Scott, called us about 24 hours later, and he said, um, she plan, she the plan, sellers she plan along with it. love your offer. The offer was an all-cash, full asking price offer. 700000 Let that sink in for a moment. He said, the sellers love the offer. They are asking that you do, that you show proof of funds. So that they can accept the offer. My ex-husband said, oh, I will wow. show proof of funds when they accept the offer. The seller said, great. We'll accept the offer when you show proof of funds. So basically, we got into a stand, a standoff. Um, and if you're a real estate agent or you work. <laughs> Boom. That nigga, right there, that nigga's a hot mess, bro. This nigga got... <laughs> Bam! Bam! This nigga got $30 to his name. <laughs> And he say, I ain't showing y'all nothing till y'all show me the offer. (laughs) 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 Bro, having a stand off with $30. 
call us to his name. I ain't showing y'all nothing till y'all show me the offer. And I know he was that. Cause think of ain't nothing. Bro, she playing, bro. She deserve a clown man, bro. No cap, bro. Working real in um, real estate, I would love to know your thoughts on this. I had asked people in my personal life, like, have you ever heard of this before? And I've had plenty of people who said I sighed with the ex-husband. I would not show my bank statements until they um, accepted the offer. And then I had other people who were like, I wouldn't accept an all cash offer unless I verify that the person can pay. So I'm just curious what your thoughts are. Okay. So my thoughts here, at the, if you would have told them the whole story or everything, it would have just been the nigga lying. That's my story. Our real estate no agent called agent. us and was like, guys, you know, the sellers are giving you two days wow. to show proof of funds. I had the letter that he showed me from Chase. I sent that to Scott, but that was for a mortgage. The offer was for all cash. Right. So he needed to show all that he needed to show proof of funds that he had the cash to pay seven hundred thousand dollars. Right. <sighs> He didn't show it. He duh, 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 duh. He refused to budge on showing them um, proof of funds until they accepted the offer because he was afraid that they were going to create a bidding war. So what ended up happening was Scott called us and said, you know, I apologize because I didn't do my due diligence as a realtor. He said, before I ever started showing you guys a house, I should have um, collected your pre-approval letter and proof of funds. He said, so at this point, my broker has informed me that I cannot show you guys another house until you show at least us, meaning the um, real estate firm until you show us proof of funds. And so I'm just like, well, I'm telling my ex-husband, just show them the fucking proof of funds. Like, right. what's the problem? Um, And so it was a lot of, you know, I don't really, I find that this is really unprofessional because it's not our fault that you didn't do your job correctly. It, it got a little ugly and it got uncomfortable because I'm like, I don't understand why you don't show them proof of funds when you clearly just signed a document right. stating that you're putting an offer in at full asking price. This was the same thing that the realtor was saying. He was like, but you just signed an offer. So right. what's the problem? Like you want them to accept the offer and then you'll show everyone the proof of funds. And my ex-husband without missing a beat said, yes. So Scott did his best to work with the seller and say, look, accept the offer. He'll show you, he'll open the books. He'll show you the proof of funds. These sellers were like, no, that's not. And it wasn't so much the sellers. It was the seller's agent. Big respect to the seller's agent. Um, but the seller's agent was like, no, that's not how we're doing business. He needs to show those proof of funds before, my, before I advise my clients to accept his offer. Period. If he's not willing to do it, we'll go on to the next offer because they did have another offer on the table for, um, it was less than asking price, but, um, they were willing to accept that offer over the all cash offer because those people had basically shown proof. So subsequently the house fell through. We passed the two day deadline they went with the other offer. Of course. Also, at this point, our real estate agent, Scott, and I do not blame him for this, pretty much cut all ties. Because what he, I believe, felt like was, I don't know what's going on, but something's going on. Right. And this is not how I do business. So, until you guys are ready to show the proof of funds um, needed to buy a house, you need to get yourself another agent. Because we were already about 20 to 25 houses deep by this point. We had already put in two other offers. They fell through. And now here we are with this house. And once again, it fell through. 
Okay. Part 13 of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? Um, okay. So, um, good news and bad news. Number one, this is part 14 of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? Bad news, this is going to be the last post for the night. And the reason why, good news, um, tomorrow's my birthday. So, I'm just going to make this video, post it, and then I will pick back up probably Friday because honestly, I truly want um, to enjoy my birthday tomorrow. I just, I just want to enjoy my birthday. Um, all right. So y'all don't be upset. <laughs> just if anything, watch parts one through 14, then um, we'll be ready for part 15. So the house fell through in October, 2020. And what I told him was, I said, I don't want to look at another house. I don't want to talk about cars. I want to get through the holidays um, because it was going to be a holiday season where I could not celebrate my family because of COVID. So I said, I just want to get through the holidays. I want to get through the end of the year. Um, and we'll revisit stuff in January. I was very calm when I said it. No argument, nothing like that. Um, and he said he understood. I just... A lot of what fueled me staying in this situation really was the fact that, number one, I didn't want to be alone. Number two, I didn't want to look stupid Um by having the relationship end so quickly for everyone to be like, we told you something was up. Um, and number three, I was ready to get married. And that, what ready to get married fueled a lot of stuff. Um, and again, I was still making my audio diaries. So listening back to it, I knew something was was wrong. I admit that I knew something was wrong, but what I thought it was truthfully was like, why does it seem like there's always something like, why can't we just go ahead and get the house? Um, why is it always something? Why can't I just get the BMW? It still didn't dawn on me how deep the something went. And for the people who keep asking, um, I'm going in order of events. So yes, there will be a video where I explain how everything came out and what came out, what was true, what was not true. It's coming. I'm just getting all of this out in order. So I told him I didn't want to look at a house no more. Um, I want to talk about houses. Do not mention the word Zillow. Do not mention the word, the word, uh, realtor, nothing. Let me just get through the holidays. And for myself, the question was, what do you want to do? You want to stay with him or do you want to cut your losses? And the part that kept me constantly second guessing myself was, what if he's not lying? What if he's not lying? There's no, literally the conversation I had with myself was, there's no way he is lying about having money. You saw, you saw the paper from Chase. They don't just approve $750,000 for a mortgage for anybody. Um, you see, I've seen his checking account. You see how much money's in his available checking. Like you, you, I don't think he's lying. <laughs> I don't think he's lying about that. But what is it? Is it that he doesn't trust me? Like I second guess myself so much. Is it that he doesn't trust me? Is it that maybe he doesn't really want to get married? Like what is it? Because I know what I saw. I know what I heard. I know. Chat, that we all might be messed up, chat. What if whole time? He wasn't even lying, chat. What if whole time he was just being unfaithful? What if he just was had a girl on the side or some shit like that? And the whole time he just playing both sides. What if he not lying about nothing? What if he just really didn't want to get into nothing? And at the end of the story, she's going to be like, yeah, whole time 
he had a whole girlfriend or a whole wife and woo woo and they was going through it and that's why he didn't want to get the house or the car or whatever. Well, the whole time he wasn't lying or he wasn't scamming. Like, that's what I'm saying, chat. Like, know oh, that he's having conversations about moving. What if he money. really ain't want to be with her, though, bro? What if whole time he just was thugging? Like, what if whole time he was just money from this account to that account? Um, I know he's paying my car note and all these bills. Like, clearly, right. this man is making money. What if he buying everything for his side chick bags? Facts, bro. Like, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, this is a good story, bro. Like, we'll never really know, chat, till we get to the end. Because, look, because clearly, he obviously not broke. He's paying bills, paying her car notes. She's seen he got he got a, a, a mortgage loan from Chase. It's something, bro. I know that. Unless I he could still be lying. Chase still could be a pathological liar, bro. Bye. Faking everything, bro. He could be a scammer. He could be using other people's bank accounts. That's possible. You can get somebody else's bank account mailed to you. He could be a scammer. Don't forget, chat. This is Atlanta. As you can see by this comment, this is a random, ran a real random man in Atlanta. He could be. I saw scammer, the bro. the promotional the letter from HR that states his new salary is two hundred and something thousand. Bro. Um. And I remember thinking, like, God, what, like, what am I missing? I'm missing something, but what is it? Because I know what I've seen. I've no, I know what right. I have touched. I have physically touched these these papers. Like, I know how to read. So, right. what is it that I am missing? He's close to his family. He talks to them all the time. You know, he's just a regular guy that just likes to watch um, NFL football. He leaves me alone when I want to watch Georgia football. Um, you know, he's paying all. He's paying the bills, groceries. I haven't had to worry financially since I've met him. Right. And as a woman who had lived on her own, paying her own bills, my God, that is the most intoxicating feeling when you meet a guy who just takes your stress and your worry away financially. But the downside is he took away the stress and the worry financially away and instead brought a mental fuck job I've never in my life had experienced. And I could not put my finger on it. I couldn't really talk to anybody about it because I'm a big believer in what happens at home stays at home. Yeah. So I didn't talk to my girlfriends about it. I didn't talk to my family about it. But I'm just, I, re I just remember being like, what am I missing? What am I missing? Um, so we did not talk about That's a fact, chat. You keep all your, your problems with your relationship between y'all. You get to telling other people, bro, you're going to look like a fool if you decide to go back, bro. So what stays between y'all stays between y'all. That's right. Houses, we did not look at cars. We didn't do any of that for November, December. And he I mean, came to me, wild. like, Mary's around wild. Thanksgiving. And he, what I thought was a very open, loving conversation. And in that conversation, he was like, okay, I know I have fucked up. I know that things are not feeling too strong right now. He was like, I want us to get married. I want I, I want a home. Um, I will show you whatever you need to see to put you at ease. Um, he was very, um, like, contrite. He was very just like what what do what do I need to do to put your mind at ease so that you know I'm in this and that I want this and that I love you and I want you to be my wife um so I was like show me your accounts he showed me his checking he showed me he showed me one of his savings he showed me a chase savings um, he did not show me the offshore and he did not show me the U.S. bank. 
So he showed me those two accounts, checking and Chase Savings. So I knew that there was money. What I saw in those accounts, there was money. I told him, I was like, if we're going to buy a house, I want it to be through the mortgage on Chase. I don't want to deal with this proof of fund shit no more. I said, I do not want to look at another house until the beginning of the ne- of the new year. He said, okay. That is when we then had a conversation. So I guess I lied because we are going to have a part uh, 15 or 16 tonight. Um, but that is when we then had the discussion about marriage. And that is where religion came into play. Um, yeah, I'll give y'all the other part.